Hello there, people of the internet. My name is Uduri Jagero, and this is Dialogues with Jagero. Today, I'm having my sec my guest the second time. Yes. <laughs> Dr. Makovey. Yes. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good, Ador. Mm -hmm. so Let's talk about dreams. Mm -hmm. You know? But before, before we talk about that, let me, let me talk about your show mm -hmm. and congratulate you. Thank you. Uh, over 10 cameras I saw there. Mm -hmm. You know? Shooting every angle, mm -hmm. every reaction of the audience. Mm -hmm. And uh, the crew members, gosh, there were more than 30. Yeah. You know? And a big budget. Mm hmm Really? That we are not going to be talking about <laughs> on this show. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's 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 a beautiful show. I am I am I am part of it, and I just love what I'm seeing. Thank Tell you. me about the Makove Walla show. So, the show started through a very simple conversation with a friend of mine. Mm. I've walked her own journey in her personal space. And uh, one day we caught up for a drink, I think three months ago, and she was like, you need to do a show. And of course I laughed it off because someone has told me that before. But for me, if you don't give me an execution plan, then that's your dream. That's not my dream. Mm. Uh, but she came with a very well laid out plan of not despite her not being a media person of how it will run and what she feels she can see in me in terms of potential. So I, th I thought, okay, um, I can see the, you know, how to get to the end journey through what she described. Mm. And I said, why not? Mm. And so once upon a, so a week later, we met four of us in a pub somewhere and that's how the dream started materializing without a single cent, without knowing how because the show is different from others uh, in terms of the layout and things now we started chatting the way as we went along which for me in terms of my personal style that's how i work mostly but in terms of um, someone who's coming in from the business aspect then they need a strategy and you know where to from here and there and whatnot so it's now when we're building the strategy around the show but we all believed the four of us we all believed that it was going to come alive and so we just worked with that faith mm -hmm. that's why i talk about the dream yeah uh the first one is going to be 13 episodes 13 episodes yes. 13 episodes yeah and you started it's interesting that you started with the, the first episode with the, the issue of divorce yeah is that something that is very important to you? We know your story about about the boss. <laughs> uh, you haven't, you, but but you haven't told us anything about it though. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it, 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 what it, I told it, is enough. I'm like a mini skirt, short enough to make you want to know more. <laughs> <laughs> but no, long enough to make you want to know more. Short enough. To yeah. To cover the necessary things. But uh, but you know, I'm thankful that you started with that because those are powerful stories that. Yeah that I had mm. um, the lady that came from far yeah. to just come and share her story mm -hmm. the man mm -hmm. at the center of it mm. uh, mm. the lady that was that was that was like the you know the coach mm -hmm. it was it was amazing um, why was it why, why was that important to start with that specific episode to launch it because that is going to be the launching part exactly mm. so I think my so maybe I introduce myself to the to the viewers who knew a different side or also who knew who don't know me. So my name is Amakove Wala. Yes. And through my lifestyle and conversations, I inspire ordinary people to be better, to do better and to live better. And it's through these conversations that people found that you know they are relatable to the stories that I share. And the stories that, that I share are based on my own lifestyle. And a big part of that lifestyle is my divorce and separation, uh, separation then divorce. And it almost became a, a description of me. Like anything I commented on, even politics, it would be if someone wants to differ with it, instead of addressing the issue, then they will bring the divorce thing or they'll bring the, you know, she's a single woman. 
Um, so I said, then let's start with that. Let's get it out of the way. Let's have these real conversations because we do have myths and mis- misconceptions around uh, what a divorce is or why or whether it's an easier option. And the thing that I was very clear about was not to turn it into a gender war. Yeah. But to have real life situations and not also going into the details, but just presenting to people and opening their eyes. And you could see from even the production, I, we don't want to let the cut out of the bag, but you could see that people were surprised because they came expecting something else. So um, the reason why I chose that was to, okay, I have owned my space. I have presented to you different scenarios. Good, let's pack. Now, people will be open to other conversations. Other is other conversations, if I had started with them, they'll be like, no, but she's talking about parenting because she's divorced. Mm. So it's about getting it out of the way, but also giving people a shock factor about divorce and separation because I don't think they know what they're, what's coming at them with this mm. show. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, with this particular shoot. Yeah. Mm. Uh, they, <laughs> they obviously don't know. Yeah. One of the things that uh, amazed me with the organization of your show, mm-hmm. uh, there were men, and mm-hmm. men were playing a very crucial part of the show. Sure. But what I saw were very capable women mm-hmm. around the show. Exactly. You know, yeah. talking about people like Wakil, people mm-hmm. like Carol, mm-hmm. you know, uh, Christine, mm-hmm. uh, all of Naomi, uh, Julie. The Julia, you know, the Yanaji. Yeah. Yeah. So many of very strong, strong, strong women. Mm. Uh, they are quick, they are t- articulate, mm. they command their presence, they mm. come with their presence. Mm. What are they say about the woman uh, that we, ha- the, the, you know, the uh, women in the society today for you? I think for me, I surround myself with such persons, deliberately mm. so. I'm at an age where there's a lot of negativity and we are going through a lot even as a country or individuals and it's very possible to lean towards complaining to lean towards excuses and naturally around me i have deliberately built a team of women who are focused on their own goals who are very good at what they do and also who are not afraid to go for what they want um so as I had mentioned we started four of us and, and the conversation started with another woman. Yeah. And that conversation, because as we went along, we decided, oh, we need this and we need that. So from the technical production side, um, it was a man leading, but he brought on board um, a lady and, a, and another gentleman and all within their rights. These are people with accolades. Um, then when it went to the aspects of fundraising, organization, the the aspects of uh, interiors. I didn't even know that we are supposed to build a set for a show. Uh, I realized my first stop, because it's people I've worked with before in, in my other spheres of life, my first stops were always women. So maybe it's subconsciously, but I would say um, without a doubt that those are people that I know, they will drop everything to support me where I need them. And I do the same for them, hopefully. Mm. <laughs> yeah, so we, our generation and the generation that's coming after us is the type that doesn't see themselves as a woman first. They see themselves as, I have studied for this particular course or I have experience in this, so I'm going for it. And so there's a lot of shedding of that female leaders. It's now leaders. And I think with that, we're going to see a lot more. And for me, I was so, so proud of the whole team, but more so that um, the species of the women that just came to support this show. The reason why I'm also asking about that is is is, is also tied to uh, shoot your shot. Yeah, yeah. You know? <laughs> Where I see a lot of women, yeah. and uh, they are equally very capable women, mm. women that are, well, well, when you look at the, uh, the things that women are looking for, mm. and the men are always jeering and saying, mm. uh, you know, uh, sometimes I feel like we are, that 
do you feel sometimes like we are they are turning we are turning tables especially in the uh, let's say for example in Nairobi mm-hmm. we are having uh, stronger women than men i don't know how to say this but we are having we are for example i work a lot with the ngos mm-hmm. And I have I most of these days I just yeah. meet women yeah, yeah. that are running those NGOs. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, we uh, there is a time you say don't mm-hmm. shoot your shot that so so ko yeah. There are no men. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's true. I would just say I think yeah. in terms naturally. Okay, we've made significant strides in claiming our spaces within various leadership roles. There's still a lot that can be done. I mean, if d- a lot of data shows that there are quite a number of women at mid-level management, but the higher you go, the C-suite levels, then they're drastically much fewer. But also from the grassroots level, because we're in Nairobi, we will tend to see much more empowered women. I visited Samburu a month or so ago, and it was, I mean, the probability of a girl in Samburu getting to tertiary education is almost like nil mm. and that's because of the culture because of the resources there so we still have a lot of work to do we are not yet done now in terms of um, approaches i think women are generally more inclined towards expressing themselves and so the shooty shot is you have to bear yourself naked almost it depends on what you want to put out there but so you'll have you'll have more women putting themselves out there but Jagger I'll tell you for a fact that there are men reading those things and there are men sending emails and that tells you that men are not afraid to be shot at or to say okay this looks like a profile I'd want to engage in and send my my request because of course we see a lot of jeering around oh who gets uh, love on the internet but people are getting love people are, people are getting even the most ridiculous requests there's none that doesn't have someone who reaches out mm. so it would lean a lot more to and then the jeering is worse when a man has posted yeah so i think that discourages men and the jeering is coming from men themselves because they're like you have you have a job you're maybe 30s you what concentrate on your career or do this and that you'd hardly see other men supporting a man's post if you go and see it that way so I, i guess maybe people also shy away when they see okay um i'll be thought to be less of a man because i've come looking for a relationship on a an internet platform but for women they're just doing their thing they're, they're just getting trying at. <laughs> yeah, they're getting shot at um yeah so let's see but since my inbox is still very full with requests it looks like it's working it's working yeah 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 mm. it's a very strange thing that thing that you do on fridays <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting to see actually i've put a pause now and until after the show and going to catch up mm. but i saw one post where you know we also give space for people who love differently from us what is that what does that mean that means that you our traditional relationship is a man and a woman one man and one woman but now we are seeing people asking for different kinds of options you go and read for yourself also. <laughs> <laughs> but it gives people that space that mm. those who are afraid um of expressing themselves that those who feel oh i have this condition we have people who are hiv positive are coming out we have women who are married who are like look this is a dead relationship but um, i don't want to leave but i need something on the side we have lgbtqs um we have all sorts of mix and matches mm. and they're getting their shots also yeah what is the yeah. bigger picture with shoot your shot by the way ah I don't know. Jagger, I don't know. I don't know how to do strategy in a big vision. <laughs> All I know is that um the people come back to me and they say this is what I got. I'm happy we're having a conversation. There's one who's getting married. Wow. Yeah, and I remember she has four children. 
Mm. And you know the ones most of those posts ridicule women who have children. Yeah. Yeah, but here is a man who's like, you know what? I take the chick the chicken and the chicks together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I guess just my my I don't want to turn it into an app. <laughs> so, <laughs> so apps apps are interesting, um, but I don't know how well they work here, especially with uh, internet security. Mm. But also with just the details, and I do understand that um, dating apps are sort of banned. I don't know that it's real. So yeah. if you call it a dating app, it's not going to be approved. Mm. Uh, but you can. Call Is that it in Kenya? Or? Yeah, in Kenya. There's oh. someone who tried it and she was told, I don't know, I've not seen the regulation. So you call it like a networking thing, then it's approved, which I find ridiculous. Mm. So, but I'm basing it on the my experience that I had with trying to create an app for another business that I have. And I think either we have people who are very not honest with their capacity or we have middlemen. So they're not the real developers, so they subcontract and then they go to the developers. And long short story short is that that app, uh, what came out wasn't what I expected, and so I lost a lot of money. So I'm happy with things being there, let people get used to the brand, and then who knows? But if there's anyone out there who wants to buy me out, <laughs> <laughs> I need money for my show. <laughs> me, I, me, I have a, a business proposal for you. Oh, good, good. In Let's terms talk. of in terms of that shoot your shot. No problem. I, I, I sat down open. with somebody for a long time. Yeah. And we talked about shoot your shot. It's it's got a lot, a lot, a lot going on. We are here. We'll talk. Let's talk about dreams. Yes. And Amakovi, I want you to be very honest with me. Mm-hmm. I'm Let's always honest, <laughs> <laughs> but more honest, okay? Yeah. I want us to talk about you as a young woman, 1920. Mm. And because there are so many women in in, in that in that age bracket. Mm-hmm. The other day, uh, somebody shot um, a question to Matheka mm-hmm. and asked him that uh, I am a young woman of 19 and I st- I'm started dating. Mm. Please tell me what I should expect from men, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. And Matheka went on and on for about six minutes. Is it Kevin? Mm-hmm. About six minutes, breaking down the man for that 19 year old, mm-hmm. you know? So I don't know if you remember you, you as 19 year old, mm-hmm. 20 years old, mm-hmm. 25 years old. Mm-hmm. Uh, what, what, what do you think you should have started doing better at that age? or the dreams that you had at that age? Mm-hmm. Mm. So that age would be my college mm. time. Uh, from my previous story, I started dating way early, at 17. Yeah? It was a long distance relationship. And I remember, I said, you know what, I'm gonna commit to this. And so, concentrated a lot with my studies, which is good, which is what, so I don't regret, regret that part of concentrating on the studies. The only thing I would have done differently is that I would have maybe allowed myself to date a couple more people because I think that age, getting to a commitment phase, I got engaged at 18 wow. to this particular person. And that was the first boyfriend. So looking back, and maybe something I'd advise the younger me is just have friends and socialize and, you know, without a view of this is the one, because then you you may miss out things that are red flags or you may miss out, you may have this fixated view of how things should go and they don't go that way. But if you you date, you know, three, four guys before, let's say, 25, then you have a feel of what it means to have different personalities, different careers, different. So I just went in with one experience, let's say, until I was 25 there. And when that experience didn't work out, then I started looking for someone else, also for another to settle so there were boxes to check rather than just 
socializing. I, I, I would encourage my children to to have as many relationships as they can. Because you're not committing to marriage early. I think we I would have delayed getting married to my thirties because of the maturity that comes when you're in your thirties. Um but then there's a flip flop where one of my the people in the show said get married early so that if it doesn't work <laughs> when it, you break up or divorce you're still young enough to get into another marriage mm. so people have different views but i think that pressure that we had that you have to get married i think has lessened right now many younger people are opting not to get married and that's a change that we're seeing that um is it positive is it negative who knows but if it works for them i say go for it marriage should not be a definition of yourself or your end goal it should be part of life's different options it is still it's still also very raw that and the fact that a lot of people are pressurizing people into marriage mm, it's there it's a it's there so giving people that voice and i think that's my passion um giving people that permission to follow their dreams and their to do them mm. yeah so if doing them involves them being in a partnership rather than a marriage being single being childless then it is important that we respect people's op- options or opinions mm. in terms of their life choices yeah mm. i can imagine how difficult it is a lot of my friends are not married eh? mm. and they're not talking about it mm. where and they should you should <laughs> <laughs> Oh they're the ones you're coming to me with the Kevin Kevin proposal. why why have you not shot your shot at Amakovi? <laughs> He's not KDF is he? He is this one. Yeah he doesn't have it is not KDF. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to your dream now as a yeah. person right now. Uh and I I was telling you that I'm going to segment it. Yes. Your dream as a person. Mm-hmm. And then your dream as a mother. Mm-hmm. And your dream as a change maker and somebody with a lot of fans fans around the world. Mm-hmm. What is your dream as a person? The woman that you are. Mhm. Mm. My dream as a person currently. Mm-hmm. Um I'm trying to build my empire. Empire here is the Amakove brand. And the Amakove brand relates to all these many things I do because I do quite a number of things. But there's a center, there's a purpose to all of them. And I, th- I have been looking for that purpose because people say, "Oh, today you're doing this, tomorrow you're doing that," and they feel like they don't understand. Like maybe I'm super stretching myself, but I'm enjoying all these things I'm doing. I'm enjoying being a doctor. I'm enjoying being an entrepreneur, and I'm enjoying being a conversationalist. I'm enjoying being an influ- influencer, if that's the term that people use. I can't say that I'll put one over another in terms of the pedestal ranking. So I have through the help of a coach, Hannah G, shout out to Hannah G. Yeah, yeah. Oh, an amazing person. Yes, so. I'm so I'm so I'm so unhappy. I'm still beating myself that I was not able to be at the Rome at the at the Rome house. Okay. I know you had Mm. You need to go for professional care for your health. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Yeah, no, but uh, <laughs> we understood why you didn't come. Yeah. Um she's helped me bring these things together. Mm. And I'm seeing now I can see I can define myself in a sentence. Because previously it was oh, I'm a mother, I'm a blogger, or I'm a doctor. Now there's a purpose. My definition is in terms of a purpose rather than in terms of what I do. And that purpose runs across or cuts across the things that I do. So my dream is that that brand that I'm building outlives me. It's a legacy. It's 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 a legacy thing that people will remember when I'm gone or even <laughs> when I decide I am now going to travel and forget everything. Um the impact that my life and whatever I did around my life had on individuals also had in society so that's the empire so my empire is not in terms of money i love money though mm. it come <laughs> but my empire is in terms of the reach yes that it's 
bigger than the Facebook platform through yeah. which most of the brands have been built on. Mm. It's bigger geographically than Kenya. Yeah. It's bigger than Africa. I want uh, um, we're going to talk about the second part of the dream. Mm. Um by the way, somebody asked, why is she having a crashed plane on a on a Facebook page? Did she leave somebody in a plane crash? I've been meaning to ask you that oh question for a long time. <laughs> oh my goodness, is that a crashed plane? So <laughs> <laughs> is that a crashed plane? No, it's not. It is a s it is an upcycled plane. That's upcycled. It. Yes, so uh, one day in our crazy moments with my other girlfriends, mm-hmm. one girlfriend said, let's go and buy an aeroplane. So I'm like, where are we buying? That's a Nyango. A Nyango, shout out. I've <laughs> so never met a Nyango. Y- you need to interview a Nyango. Yeah. I'll give you the context. She needs to come. Zanta, yeah. Zanta, Dede. Mm. So I'm like, what are we going to do with the plane? She said, no, I don't have any idea, but let's go. So we went and there were, um, Kenya Airports Authority was auctioning them because of that state for so long. Mm. at the airports and they needed their space back so recovering their demerage i guess charges so we went and it was an auction and we dressed up we put on mini skirts so that we confuse the men who have come to also <laughs> auction to bid for those things they and also went there yeah it was very competitive there were planes that were still functional mm-hmm. in fact most of them were removed the day before jagero like there were police aircrafts there being auctioned because they hadn't, they had bills that they owed to Kenya Airports, mm-hmm. but I think they cleared their bills because the next during the auction day the, the planes weren't on the list. So we wanted um, a, a plane that was no longer running and transform it into a resort. That's all we knew. Wow. We didn't know anything about planes, so we went in. So I put in my bid, and you had to put in hundred thousand shillings cash money. Before you, before you start, the starting yes, beat. Yes, and then like that doesn't come back to you. No, if you lose it, it comes back. Okay. Yeah. So, so we had identified. You needed to have identified the, the plane. plane that yeah, you want. So earlier on, we'd gone in, checked it. I don't know what we're checking because we have no idea about planes. <laughs> you, you, <laughs> but you, we, we you, did. You were just asking which is the faulty one. Which yeah, is the yeah, one that yeah, doesn't yeah, fly. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we had someone inside of there. We went around, identified the two planes. So my turn came before hers, and we started bidding. And we had no idea how much because the bids were like from sixty-five thousand shillings. Sixty-five thousand for a plane. Yeah, others were from five thousand. There's one that was from five thousand went to it was sold off at one point two million. Wow. Because, you know, you keep on bidding, bidding, bidding. Mm. So I think I panicked when mine reached like 350,000. And I'm like, where am I getting 350,000? And there's a guy who kept on bidding. So I I was the second last. So I just told him, okay, sir, you take it. Then now we said, no, we can't leave this place without a plane. The way we all dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> so now it was a younger stand to, to bid. To bid, yeah. yeah. So she stood up and... Uh, Long story short, she got the plane. Um, then they announced to us, you need to move the plane out in seven days. Wow. Yeah, and you've seen the size of the plane. It's a Fokka 27. Now I know what a Fokka 27 means. It's a cargo plane. Um, I'm actually looking for the history of that plane because it's go- it's part of the story of the resort. Mm. Yeah, and it's, it's a family. So I've identified the family. So it's just narrowing down to where they are. But the owner passed on. Um, so, you know, a plane has a span of wings, it has a height, mm-hmm. and it's going all the way to Kisarian from Wilson. So we get, now in that bidding, there are brokers. Yeah. There are brokers for trailers, there are brokers for, the ones for chopping it. up, yes, for yeah. chopping up the plane. So we got someone who linked us up, and we realized we needed to chop it up first. Then re- reconnect. Then, then, then reconnect. Then, then, That's yes. why people say it's a crashed plane. Because you can't move a Fokker <laughs> and 7 from Wilson to... Oh, to I see. Yeah. I see. And you have to go. You have to do a recce visit. Because you have to look at the power lines. Because it's high. You have to... It's put on... It went on six trailers. We had to get six trailers. And um, all these permits, police permits, national highways, county governments, two county... Oh, it was crazy. Really? So when we was this happening? Last year? Two years the ago? The year before, yeah. Like November of 2021 or December there. Yeah, so so now we said, okay, now we need to look for an architect to look at 
to to bring our dream to life. All we knew is that we were putting up a resort that is half plane, half building. So I own half the plane and it's a longitudinal half. <laughs> so we had to chop it now into two. <laughs> and so that's why it's pieces. But my plane is now up. It's uh, the structure is, uh, let's say, 90% done. Actually, I'm looking for financier to finish because in my excitement, I did not consult a tourism expert. And so we've now remembered we need staff houses and we need a get house and we need landscaping and we need you know all this and that yeah but the building is up yeah so i believe so i believe i believe when this 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 goes out uh, a lot of people will be calling you to exactly and, and it's and the only money. one of its kind in a, in the world because mm. everyone renovates full planes yeah no one mixes a plane and a building so yeah. this is the first of its kind. So it's it's so the other your friend went with the other half and you went with the other half and they are in different location with the same location. They're in different locations. Ah, there's yeah. another resort somewhere of another over place. She's yet to start putting hers up. Mm. Yeah, but she will also do, do hers. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it's um that's why it's call it upcycling of a plane. Because what would that plane be doing? Mm. How do you dip, have you realized how do people dispose of planes? I have never known. Yeah. So I am in the sustainability space <laughs> of building a three room resort. It's gonna have a jacuzzi on top, open air jacuzzi. We are nudists, you know. Me, my friend and I. You're nudists. Yeah. Oh, what, does said, yeah. what does that mean? What does that mean? The last time you said ah, Jagero. Jagero. Uh, wait, wait, watches, uh. watches. I'm asking for the lawyers out there. <laughs> <laughs> new this means you you have no shame walking around naked. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, that makes the two of us. I am also. Yeah. I also, so I also, you're, now you're like, <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hi, I'm Jagera, I'm a new <laughs> That's what you're saying. But it's a it's it's a private place, so it's, mm. oh, it's beautiful. You have to visit. I'll take you there. When are you going there next? I I usually go weekends because mm. I do a bit of farming there. That is where you're farming the, the, the turkeys and the yes, one that you yes, want. Yes, and the rabbits and whatnot, yeah. Is there somebody taking care of that farm the other side, right? Mm, because yeah. you're I have workers, yeah. Oh, great. I'm a farmer. Oh, in my in my definition, I should have, you have added farmer. <laughs> yeah, you have always said that, you know. Mm. So that's great. Mm. Then then motherhood, you the dream, your dream as a, as a, I've, I've, I've heard you saying that you want your your girls to date as much as they want. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have one kid, mm -hmm. a young girl mm. who is a coming to eight years mm. in January. Mm -hmm. uh, nice. I don't know. My, you know, my dream as a father mm -hmm. is to make her learn a lot of things. Mm -hmm. You know, I want her to learn the guitar. Yeah. I want her to learn the drums. Mm -hmm. I want her to be to to. Do you do you, do you know how to play those? No. Yourself? So why do you want her to learn? Does she I, want to? I learn? want to expose her to them and see if there is something she likes. Okay. So I just want to buy a piano. Mm. I just want to buy because right now I know she's a very good drawer. Is that the term? The word? An artist. Yes, she's an mm. artist. She draws a lot of things. Mm. But I also want to expose her to some other things, like uh, just get a keyboard, get a drum set, mm. and also. Why don't take her to a class first and then see? If oh yes. Bef because this thing's expensive. Because I've been left with a violin that I bought for almost fifty thousand. Mm. So take her to a class and see if yeah, she likes it. Yeah, you'll be left with a lot of instruments. <laughs> oh, I see. That's so, that's that's that's, yeah. that's but good go to ahead. hear. Yeah. But I also want to start traveling with her. Yeah, yeah. I want to start appearing in videos with her mm -hmm. at 10 years because mm -hmm. that, that was the, what her mother told me that she's not going to appear on the internet okay, before too. 10 years. Yeah, that's fine. You know? Mm. So, uh, back to you. Mm. You have uh, four? Four three? children. Four years mm. and three are tri uh, triplets. Yeah, so they have a son who's turning 16 soon mm. and the triplet girls who are 13 and a half. 13 and a half. Mm. Uh, great. Uh, my sister just got triplets the other day. Oh, she let her join our society. Oh, I founded a society also. <laughs> what is it called? Multiples to multiple society. Oh yeah. Yeah. You don't it's talk also about. You don't talk about, about, about it much. Because I ceded chairmanship after seven years, so hmm. 
So the current chair, I I don't want to steal the yeah. show. Yeah, I like I'd like the. I'm like a trustee now. Mm. Yeah, but if you see multiples, I'll be tagged. You'll find. Oh, because we really supported families. We support them psycho psychosocial support, mm. but also the ones that are needy. Then we do a bit of fundraising here and there. Yeah, mm. I can imagine. Mm. It's it's a lot of work. She's in for a long. Yeah, yeah, roller coaster. They're just, they're just, they're just, just, they're just born the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy to support her. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. So, as a mother, mm. what what is your dream for your kids? What is your dream as a mother? Do you want them to be to be playing, you know, big sports out there? What do you want mm. for them? Are you one of My those? Are you one of those parents that are saying this is the way? No, 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 no. <laughs> Because I was told what to do. Mm. And maybe perhaps I'm finding my space now mm. because I was not allowed to do extracurricular activities. It was about academics, academics, academics. Um, so my very big purpose is to ensure they are all rounded in terms of I'd rather have an average grade in academics, but someone who's knows a sport or knows uh, whatever their passions are. Yeah? someone who's able to pursue something that they are passionate about. So my vision for them is one that at 18 they no longer depend on me because I'm tired. Jaga I've been raising them for all these years alone. <laughs> oh, yeah. I need a break. Mm. So I am ensuring they'll be fully independent and out of my house at 18 and I remind them every day mm. that their beds are just made at for 18. At 18. Yes, they as long as I've gone to college no, they're out of my house. No, this is somebody told me. You know, so you know what somebody told yeah. me. Yeah. He told me that Chagero I want you to have a meeting with my with my daughter. Yeah. And te- and don't tell her that I tell mm. you I told you this. But I have taken her to real school. Mm. I took her to USIU. Mm. And then to masters. Mm. But now she's in my house mm. watching Netflix. You see. But why is he allowing it? Or she? Because I think they're just both stuck. <laughs> <laughs> just want to start academic uh, academic academic I will not be stuck Ac- academic sure. <laughs> I will not even be in that house academic <laughs> academic academic yeah so i think there's a bit of um, helicopter parenting that i see happening where you feel your children are so vulnerable they need to be sheltered throughout so my children right now i can give you my children and you will be very comfortable with them because they know what to do at any one time they have they have a program to follow they have manners <laughs> there are things they know they w- there's a language they can't speak uh they'll take care of themselves in terms of putting a simple meal together so there are skills that i think we are losing out because we are doing everything for them and i don't want to bring such kind of children up so my mission in life is to make them independent by adulthood which is 18 years independent here means not financially of course because then there's still a responsibility in, in terms of fees and stuff but independent in terms of you are able to go and live by yourself let's say if you're sent to and i've seen my friends sending their children abroad south africa to 12 years 13 years boarding school in this is a foreign culture they need to know how to navigate airports they need to know how to live with other people they need to know how to budget mm. so if you don't teach them early then they don't they can't cope when they're out there in the big bad world so if I'll define my success in terms of an independent child at 18 years mm. where i'm able to say now in fact they know that um their first salary they have all kind they all have a place to take me for holiday for raising them for sure <laughs> just you you, so, you have been and I remind them every day but uh, but I do hope that that turns out so my my mine is not about oh I want to raise a doctor an engineer or mm. what no because I've seen that you can make a living out of very simple things in the, in this life mm uh we i think we held our professions in such high regard that artisans were you know seen as second rate kind of careers um blogging can you imagine people are making money from 
talking like you jagger <laughs> people are making my who would have known who would have known yes so that creativity they need to know that you can make a very big profession out of being creative uh you can and you can also do more than one thing mm. you can also change your mind later yeah so i'm not so fixated in oh when you grow up what do you want to be no when you grow up you need to be standing by yourself whatever you'll be doing you need to be standing by yourself mm. yeah and your dream as a change maker amakove do you realize how much people uh, appreciate you and look up to you mm. uh, it's a question <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> um I I do realize uh I think the show helped me realize wow you it's almost um, a scary thing because then you're on the spotlight and it's almost like um what you say what you present yourself to be there's someone who's getting a lesson out of it so there's a big responsibility to to know how to put it in a way that even if it's your lifestyle for example you'll never see me holding a drink to my mouth in in a photo you get well yeah i haven't yeah you'll see the drink but it's it's down the table it's not in my mouth so there are some things i will deliberately not do or not post now especially now with a lot of the branding coaching just because of how many eyeballs are on that post and the simple if thing that there's a responsibility based on now this brand that I'm carrying that has an influence on people but having said that um there's also that si- other side where I'm saying look I don't shower on Sundays Yeah. If you shower twice a day, well and good for you. Me I'm conserving the mother earth on Sundays. I don't shower on Sunday. Uh, yes, unless I've gone out. Mm. Umeogopa? <laughs> so that's why thing we stay inside we lay I mean we are in our pajamas or whatever yeah. or we are even uh, nudist if I don't have company in the house. Mm. It's another I mean there are things and I'll say it and that's me. So you can't say that uh you can judge me whatever you want but that's me. So I need also I try also to put it in such a way that um there's also me the person who doesn't necessarily have to be your role model or a lesson. I'm allowing you to also do your own nuances because we've been you know I think we've been uh, programmed to show the best side of our lives or that we are always our hair is always in place or mm. yeah so i wear crocs that's my most comfortable shoe and i can wear crocs too and so you're taking photos with the crocs after the show yes 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 <laughs> <laughs> i carry the crocs because i was like after all this is said and done yeah now i'm a cover the real i'm a cover is coming out in the comfortable i'm a cover mm. Um so there's 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 yeah I was talking about the imp- the um, sig- recognition of the impact I think it hit home from from the the number of people who showed up for the show especially get the show getting sold out in yes, was it 2 hours sh- or 4 hours I just I think one and a half hours, two hours maybe. Mm. Like that really was shocking. Mm. And even the ones who came, you know, for many of them they said we just wanted to be with you in the same place. Yeah. We wanted to take a photo, we wanted to. So I think for me that's something I've never experienced. Mm. Uh but also just being grateful that despite because there's there's a lot of backlash also it's not all rosy being yeah. out there putting your mm. life out there and so just realizing that there's that one person yeah to whom your story or whatever you share <coughs> makes an impact yeah then um that to me is we are going to come back to discussing the dinner that is coming up the oh, the, yes. the, the, the 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 premiere 
the premium. That's coming up. But but before that, I'm going to indulge a little bit yeah. more. <laughs> uh, let's talk about relating uh, our relationship with each other. Mm. You have a lot of friends, you know, that you relate to. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the things that people suffer, uh, find difficult is to, you know, maintain, retain mm-hmm. relationships uh how to deal with people because there are so many people and there are so many uh types of people mm-hmm. coming with their baggage coming with their triggers coming with what not mm-hmm. what have you learned about dealing with people that has helped you to navigate these triggers these attitudes just different people coming into your space with different agenda how do you usually for the for example the first time i met you yeah mm-hmm. uh we have uh sort of uh, become closer mm-hmm. right how do you how do you make sure that you that you deal with each and every person differently i don't know whether i'll term it differently uh, okay i'm the type of person to trust a hundred percent first mm. i'm the type of person to trust a hundred percent first so if you tell me jagero that you're a vlogger or your media personality i wouldn't i wouldn't go doubting that you're not yeah and that's a plus but it's also a minus because the plus is that i will give you the benefit of doubt like i will not bog my head with trying to and uh, what if he's coming with a sinister a sinister motive and stuff but it's a minus because i have been conned and hurt a lot based on that because I, I trusted you. Um, but I'm also the type that really believe in the best of people. And I know we all can't have good days. So sometimes you interact with someone and that was, they've, they've had something they've experienced before your interaction. And so they come with all these emotions. And it's very easy to think that you are the source of that and then now have a confrontation and whatever it is people do so i first of all i i avoid conflict at all costs um which again is not conflict needs to be resolved but when i see conflict i i pull back because mm. i don't know how to shout i don't i don't know how to at least I'm very tired or I've met those fairy guys <laughs> who were <laughs> showing uh, some racism. Mm. But naturally, it's very hard to get me upset. I don't know, maybe it's because I've gone through a lot and I realize, is it worth my energy right now? Or is it worth my time in terms of resolving it? Am I responsible to bring you back to your better moods mm-hmm. so if it says no then i leave it and i think that has really helped me especially with online confrontations because they're there a lot of online confrontations from people who are strangers but we also have confrontations from people who are friends i learn to hit the ignore button a lot of the times uh, when i feel it is necessary to confront then I've learned to not do it immediately because I used to be very reactive. Like, I need to put the record straight. So over time, I've learned that, one, you don't always have to be right, even if you're right. Um, But number two, you don't always have to set the record straight there and then. Because then it just takes the person, the other person, to maybe a defensive mode and, you know, none is the wiser then. So... I don't think I've perfected the art of, um, let's say, dealing with everyone. But I'd say I'm pretty good at dealing with from the watchman to the president. And I've interacted uh, with people of all types. And you realize that um, you have to get a different strategy for everyone that you meet. But my first strategy is that I'll trust you first. Mm. Then now when you start being inconsistent... (laughs) <laughs> I withdraw. Inconsistent. Yes, and especially with relationships. So there are many <laughs> men there. I know they're listening. I tell them, you know what? I don't have the time to... You told me you're going to call. 
Yeah. And I will expect you to call. If you don't call the first time, I'll ask you, why didn't you call? You tell me the second time you're going to call. You don't call, I'll keep quiet. The third time, you'll not find me there. Mm. So, there's also, I think, learning to value your worth such that you are also not trampled upon because it's very easy for our personalities to get taken advantage of in terms of the innocence that's perceived that we carry. So defining your boundaries is very important because we are givers. We give a lot of time, emotions, resources when they're there. And so it's important for us to see it's okay to be selfish with my time. It's okay to say I don't... I don't need to go out. I don't need to do this and that. But generally, you disarm someone when you don't respond. Yeah, they say it takes two to tango. So sometimes people who are naturally aggressive, they're, they're looking to just kindle that fire. So you just pull out the rest of the firewood. It's that one ember. It's going to go off. And that's what I think resonates, or rather that's why you find a very mature crowd on my following. Because I, I don't, I won't engage you. If you come call me a bitter divorcee, I won't engage. So you don't have the fire to continue. But I find in some other platforms, people like, you know, hit this and hit that, and then your followers come and they add fire, and something that was maybe a misinterpretation becomes such a big thing yeah so you ask yourself is it worth will it be worth it in five minutes in five hours in five years if it's not move along mm. let's go back to the show to your show and mm. uh, let's talk about the premiere mm. the premiere dinner and my bearded gang you're a bearded gang member of Jagera. <laughs> <laughs> what are they going to be doing by the way this bearded gang they're going to make me look good it's my time to shine, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> 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 Let me tell you, it was so interesting. Uh-huh. We objectified the men. And I was like, this is what men feel when they're looking at us. And so, you know, we were <laughs> like, this one looks good. So we're vetting them because we got over 40 people sending photos. And yeah. then we asked for topless photos. That's what you did? Yes. Because you tell me, because it was the definition was a bearded guy. Yeah. Member, but you have to be well toned. Yes. Yeah. So you can still be bearded, but not well toned. Mm. Yeah. So he said, Manena Kuva, my sweater, remove them. Send us. Uh, uh, that show is going y- to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So t- t- talk to us about it. The, the you know the uh, some of the some of the things, the dates, where it's going to happen. Sure, sure. Yeah. So so what we did, and I think this is what many people didn't expect, is that for you to do all these shows that you see, the Steve Harvey's, the operas, mm. is that they've been shot prior. Yes. Um, I also got to understand a lot of the work that goes behind. Mm. And so the raw shooting is what happened on 11th of October. Yeah. And now it's being edited into now the 23 or the 30 minute um, show that will be released. So the premiere on 1st of December uh, this year in Panari Mombasa Road, Panari Hotel Mombasa Road, is the unveiling of the Amakove Wala show. So it's not about the divorce and separation. It's yeah. about the show itself. What yeah. does it mean? Um, so of course we're going to watch. We're going to watch the 30 minutes, which none of us has seen. And I guess we'll be seeing it all at the same time. And then we come down. The, so that will be done at Anga Cinema. So they have two cinema halls. We've booked both of them. So the Anga Cinema show will be done there. There'll be a red carpet. It's, it's a red carpet event. So come dressed for the mm. Amako, the Amako mm. Wala show. You have to put the the article before the <laughs> Amako, before Amako Wala. Then, then they come downstairs to the courtyard. So the gala will be set up there. Mm. And within this, we aim to have an insight. We'll also have feedback from the people who, who have watched, 
how did it make them feel what could be improved or what they thought or what next although we've already set out all the other uh, topics of the next season um, so the show will be a premiere um, so it means it's the first screening yeah so th anyone who's buying a ticket we have VIP tickets and we have ordinary regular tickets so all these people will be private to the first screening of the show I'm yet to see a similar show within um, okay I've not researched much in Africa but it's almost like we don't have so much a lot of it is the western time yes so we want to do our conversations the african way the african context but delivered with international standards and so the team that came on board and that's why it was quite expensive to put it together your team the production team everyone came in was top notch of the industry so this is how Makove Wala does her things. The empire. You said uh, class. Yeah. You said something about about do it hard and go home. What is the what is yes, the, the, yes, the yes. phrase? Go big or go home. Go big or go home. Yeah. The prizes for the tickets. So we have ten um, seven thousand five hundred shillings because they offer for the reduced tickets uh, expired. So seven thousand five hundred shillings is for the gala. I mean, for the regular ticket, and then we have fifteen thousand for the VIP. Mm. Yeah, so the VIP, you have up close and candid conversations. You have express priority access. You have goodies like we've lined up. Mm. We we've lined up a lot for the for the members. So I encourage everyone to go to Tiko Hub, T I K O H U B dot mm. dot K E. And you're going to get our tickets there. And you also so. told me that there are others that may be interested in sponsoring the the gala. Oh yes, mm. oh, yes. Um, because we are going big with the gala, then we are also looking for long term, not just for the event, but long term partnerships. So if you go to our website, the amakovewalashow dot com, you will find all the details. Um, the the season that's coming up is going to tackle a lot of other conversations because, as you said, we needed to get the divorce and separation out of the way. But there's parenting, there's diaspora lives, there's financial literacy. There are quite a number. But it's shoot your shot in there. Oh yes, there's relationship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> shoot your shot. Um, parenting, the 21st century child. So there's there's a lot for everyone. I don't think you will find a, uh, an episode that you can't relate to. Mm. Yeah, so we we look forward to it. We look forward to partnerships. We received amazing support from Username. I want to give a shout out to them. Username Investment Limited. They came to us when no one, when we had zero. Yeah, and they said they believed in our dream mm. even before we shot it. Yeah. So giving them the credits for that. Mm, great. Mm. So thank you very much. It's always wonderful talking to you. Thank you, Jagero. Uh, you know, You're the last the last time that they said, uh, uh, do you know it has reached I think 1.8 million views now? Where you say, Jagero, I have a lot of sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still having a lot of sex. <laughs> but Jagero, I heard that there are men who asked for my contact and he didn't give them. No, I, I, I. This I, is called cock blocking, Jagero. It, it's it's called pimping that I don't want to do. It's not pimping. Pimping is when there is. Someone with higher authority, Jagera. Jagera, you're not higher authority than me. Mm. Mm. But I still, I still, I still hold the cocks. <laughs> <laughs> tell them to come on. <laughs> tell them to come on first December. <laughs> then there will be no cock blocking. <laughs> but thank you so much. Also for your show, you do reach out to a lot of people. Yeah. And you make it very easy to talk to. So I, I need you to interview Anya, Zanta Dede. Zanta Dede. She's, if you thought I'm crazy. Yeah. Yeah, talk to what, Zanta. What does she, what, 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 what? Zanta is a jeweler. Mm -hmm. And she, she works with uh, brass and leather. Oh yeah? Brass yes. and leather. Yeah. And she's top end, top end product. She she's she on international runways. That brand. Mm. And I got her from a government institution. Wow. She was working there. I told her, Zanta, you're wasting your time selling meat. Yes. Can you go and follow your passion? Zanta is a brand in the Broadway. Oh, amazing. Get her on board. I will get her. Yeah. Thank you very much, Amakove. I wish you the best with your show. 
Thank you. You know, and thank you very much for, um, you know, bringing oof to my show. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Give and take. Yes. I love it. Yeah. Karibu sana and uh, hope to see this going towards a TV show. Yes. Yeah. It will. Yeah. Okay. Are we ready? All right. Thank you very much. That is Dr. Amakove. Wala. Elizabeth Uliaja. <laughs> <laughs> Apart from blocking, yeah. Cut it out. Okay, that was <laughs> people of the internet. Thank you very much for tuning into Dialogues with Jagero. Please subscribe, I leave comments, and hit on that notification bell. And please do find time to go to the Amakove Wala dinner and premiere, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Until another episode, bye for now. <laughs>